Hey guys, Eric Martel here. I've been investing in real estate for 30 years and I've made so many mistakes. I want to make sure that you don't do the same. And I'm hoping that these failures will help you accelerate your success in real estate. But before we begin, make sure that you like and subscribe because every week I'm gonna be putting out videos where I'm gonna share exactly my strategies and my tips on investing in real estate successfully. These are the things I wish I knew before I started investing in real estate. The first thing that I wish I had known was to change the mindset. So I come from a lower middle class family and my parents were really working, living paycheck to paycheck and discussions around money were always more like an argument more than a simple discussion. So when I told my parents that I wanted to be a business owner, that I was really interested in business, they kept telling me these mantras about, oh, you know, business is very risky. The business people or rich people are cheating the system. This is why they make so much money. But I knew that there was some, was some kind of disconnect, that my parents were missing something. They were missing some information and it was not really connected to reality and what I was seeing. And what I was seeing is that a lot of wealthy people were doing great and enjoy their life and they didn't have to worry so much about paycheck to paycheck. The thing is that these mantras were passed on from generation to generation. She was repeating what her parents told her and probably what her grandparents told her parents. So it just keeps repeating. I needed to break that cycle. So I had to figure out how to fill that gap. You know, is it going to be school? Is school going to tell me how to be an entrepreneur, how to be a business owner? And you soon realize that school has been created to educate people to get a full-time job. This is what they're about, not about generating free, spirited, open-minded entrepreneur and business people. So where do you get that formation? Well, I was lucky enough to meet someone at university. He was a real estate investor, but he was also a community college teacher. He was just a regular guy. And this is when I knew it was possible to bridge that gap. It was possible to be successful. You didn't need to be an expert. You didn't need to have an advanced degree. He basically explained exactly how do we find an opportunity? That was the first thing. And I told Greg, I said, I don't have any money. He said, don't worry about that for now. Find the opportunity. We'll deal with the money later. And uh, this is how I ended up buying my first apartment building, an eight unit apartment building. I was still at university, no money down. So that means I had like a mortgage and I had a, a seller financing note on top of that. So no money down except the cost of writing the check for the approval of the mortgage. And the property was cash flowing from day one. So the mindset that you need and the mindset that I had to change was that it is possible. You are able to achieve these goals. You don't need to have some special skills in order to achieve these goals. And that all the people that are telling you that this is not possible, they're either scared of doing it themselves or they're just ignorant. They just don't know what skills they need. They don't know how to get there. So if I knew then what I know now, I would have forgot about getting that job as an associate actuary. I would have focused on real estate investing and I would have figured a way out. So even after I bought that building with Greg, so it was cash flowing, I still didn't feel, you know, I could do this again. I felt like it would be very hard for me to find another deal I could buy with no money down because I felt that I needed that money. So this is the part where you, my mentor really couldn't help me with that because he didn't have that, that problem. And this is why that change in mindset is important is that my skill was really about finding the opportunity, finding the deal. I needed to understand how to bring other people together, other investors together to make that deal come to fruition. Now that you have the right mindset, what you have to figure out is what you really, really want. And what I mean by that is that you have to be clear about your goals. And your goals should really be about what you want out of life. What kind of lifestyle do you want? Not about how much money you have in the bank account. And it's just kind of where people get confused. They keep focusing on accumulation of wealth and money, but this is not what life is about. You want to be able to enjoy and spend some of that money in order to enjoy life. When Greg basically invested in real estate, his goal was to retire early. So that's why it's important for you to figure out what you want out of this. If you're going to spend all this time and energy in investing in real estate, you want to make sure that it's worth it, that it's going to get you to where you want. And you have to define it in terms of your lifestyle and what you want to accomplish. The key to this is specificity. So you want to make sure that it's specific enough and also something that's going to help motivate you and something that you can look forward to. Now that we have a goal to achieve financial freedom, we need to find a strategy that helps you get there. There's so many different ways to make money in real estate. It's mind boggling. 
It's just you have to find the right strategy and that strategy needs to be aligned with your goal. And one of the key things that you need to align with is the amount of time that you can dedicate to the strategy and the amount of money that you have. Out of all the strategies out there, you don't want to pick a strategy that you need to spend 20 hours a week to get it off the ground. You want to know how much time you have, how much money you need, and how long it's going to take you to get there. So that way you don't waste time on strategies that you can't afford or you don't have enough time to get them off the ground. The other thing I wish I knew is that don't assume that your mentor, if you have a mentor, don't assume that your mentor knows everything about real estate investing. So a mentor is a great way to get started and accelerate your learning and help you get to your goal a lot faster. But there are a lot of investors out there that know a lot more about different strategies. Don't be cornered to just one mentor. Be open-minded and also talk to other investors and learn from them as well. Once you find a strategy that you want to work with, find a mentor that has a lot of experience doing that and then you work together with them. My mentor, uh, when I bought that eight unit apartment building, never used a property management company. So when I bought that building, it was cash flowing, but there was no property management company. So I was the property manager and I'm not a good property manager. I can tell you that. So this was a gap in learning. He's done these deals often, but he never had a property management company in place. So if I knew then what I know now, I would have put, a, for example, a property management company in place for my building, but I didn't know enough at the time. So so don't take your mentor as someone that is going to give you all the answers, is going to do all the work for you and all of that. You have to be in the driver's seat. Think of your mentor not as a god, but more as a coach. Someone that is watching you play the game and is telling you how to tweak your game to get there a lot faster or to work a lot better. So you don't have to invest in your backyard. You have to think like an investor. If you live in Alaska, you want to do an ice cream business. Yes, you can make money selling ice cream in Alaska. But don't you think that it'd be easier to sell ice cream in Florida? This is what I'm talking about here is that if you have a strategy, you have to find the right market for that strategy. And what I mean by thinking like an investor is that you have to kind of like remove some of the emotions. Uh, a lot of people are going to say, well, I want to be in my backyard. I want to see my my investment and my building. I want to be able to drive by it. Don't think like that. You have to think about what are the numbers telling me? Where is my investment getting the best return, including appreciation and all of that? And this is the market that you should be investing in. I moved from city to city and then I was trying to look for rental properties where the numbers made sense and I couldn't find anything. I realized that if I was to look outside of the city, I was able to find some deals where it actually made a good return. So if I I knew then what I know now, I would have started investing out of state a lot earlier. When I decided to invest outside of California and find the best market to invest in, this is when my real estate investing really took off. So if you're working full time, you want to find something that's going to require the least amount of time for you to invest. And this is why I recommend turnkey rental real estate. So when I chose to achieve financial freedom, I tried all kinds of different businesses. I mean, we had the low carb grocery store. Remember, we had the gourmet sauce company. It required a lot of time. It required a lot of effort from myself and my wife to get this off the ground. It took years for us to get some kind of traction to get these sauces to Whole Foods and other markets. And still, even after five years of spending time doing this, it was still just breaking even. This is why I recommend that you do something that requires the least amount of time. Continue to work full time and really focus on that, but have a turnkey rental property, something that you can just invest very quickly, get some passive income, and achieve financial freedom as quickly as you can. This is kind of like the step one of financial freedom. After that, there's a whole bunch of new opportunities that are gonna open up for you. Before you follow your passion or alongside of your passion, start building a passive income portfolio. Start building that, generating that passive income so that eventually you have enough passive income to be financially free and then you can truly follow your passion full time. Follow your passion after you achieve financial freedom. You can't scale up by working part-time. So many years, I've always had a side gig. Side gig was there to kind of generate some income or really follow something that I, was, I really enjoyed doing. You get to a point when you have a strategy that works and then you just, in order for it to scale up, in order for it to really work, you have to dedicate yourself full-time to it. But you have to wait until you, you find that strategy that works and then you jump right in. 
So don't wait for the market to be right. I mean, we're always in an interesting situation. Is the market going to go down? Is the market, are we in a bubble and all of that? Don't try to time the market. You just, you just can't. You just keep buying bit by bit, build that passive income portfolio every year, a little bit at a time, and eventually you're going to get there. Yes, yeah, some of the houses you're going to buy maybe at the top of the market, but some of them you're also going to buy low in the market. So in the end, if you have a long-term strategy, it's all going to even out. Just make sure the deal cash flows and jump right in. If I knew then what I know now, I would have started buying real estate rentals a lot earlier, a little bit at a time, every year, even through 2008 and 2010, and I would have achieved financial freedom a lot earlier. So make sure you like and subscribe because every week I'm going to be putting out videos that's going to show you not only the mistakes that I made, but also the successful strategies that I've employed to achieve financial freedom. Thank you and goodbye.